Hell, what is it? I don't use it. Um, but the reality is that these tools change all the time. What doesn't change are consumers' expectations of brands. I think it's a question we need to ask ourselves. It's how, it, as brands, how do we live up to customer expectations? That's a question for you. I would say, number one, you have to have a kick-ass product. So when you think of a kick-ass product, what's the brand that comes to mind? Anyone? Apple. I would also say that you would need stellar customer service. So what are some companies online who have really good customer service? Zappos. Zappos, what else? Apple. Apple. <laughs> Comcast is another one. They're a US uh, cable provider. Excellent customer service. And then number three, and that's what the data tells us, is consumers are expecting brands to engage authentically. Now, I have a problem with being authentic. Well, I don't have a problem with being authentic. I have a problem with telling you that brands need to be authentic. Because I think we're at this point in time where we all know that already. Brands need to be authentic, and it's been drilled in us for 10 years. And I think for the most part, <coughs> brands are authentic. They make mistakes every now and then, and you learn, but they're pretty authentic. I believe that in order for a brand to achieve success, they need to become believable. If you recall during the uh, 2008 election, uh, Barack Obama was talking, his, his main positioning statement was hope and change that we believe in, right? And again, not trying to make a political, state, political statement, all I'm saying is that was drilled in us from every medium, Twitter, Facebook, uh, media, print, everywhere you, saw, everywhere you looked, you saw hope and change that we can believe in. In fact, uh, Edelman, there's a, something called the Edelman Trust Barometer. I, I recommend you, you Google it and you can download it for free. And it talks about how consumers, um, they need to hear things five different times in five different channels before they actually believe it and trust you. So, question for the audience is, how does a brand become believable? Anyone? If I say my HP netbook rocks and it, you know what, fits my mobile lifestyle, it's fast, how, how am I going to get you to believe me? Honest, honest, using it, okay. Um, so this is what I meant, Carlos. Uh, we just talked about this study, but I have kind of a different take on it. Um, one thing that Carlos forgot to mention was that this study was that measured the top 50 brands, they, they really looked in, at the way... Break the, the, excuse me, the breadth and depth of engagement, meaning it wasn't the quantity of Twitter followers, it wasn't how many channels, it was were they responding to questions, were they responding to tweets, were they helping customers online. Those are the ones that saw significant increases in revenue, up to 18%. Whereas the ones who had, they may have had a million followers, but all they were doing was pushing out one-way messages, their revenue was declining up to 12%, or down to 12%. And, I, and this, is just a, this is not a scientific study. This is just a correlation. Just wanted to throw it out there. Um, so it correlates to financial performance. But I had a point. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> oh, okay. I know what it was. So when you actually look at these companies, and, and you know what? I used to work for Yahoo. That was like the worst job I've ever had, by the way. I'm sorry if anybody here worked at the Yahoo. Um, and it's Intel, and they're the top ten. And in those roles, I was like responsible for some community management and social media. So I take some credit for this. So, FYI. Anyway, if you look at the top, specifically the top three brands, and really study what they do online, they're doing something interesting. They, they built these mechanisms where they're actually listening to their customers, right? Dell Idea Storm, my Starbucks idea. <clears throat> but they're also acting upon that feedback. So here's, here's a correlation. Anybody married? Raise your hand if you're married, okay, or, or in a relationship. Okay, I'm, I've been married 10 years. And, um, you know, my wife says I don't listen to her. I beg to differ. Uh, you know, as an example, she'll, you know, I'll be, I work late downstairs, and a lot of times I leave my socks in the living room. And uh, so the next day she'll be like, honey, um, can you, you know, when you come up to bed, can you put your socks in the hamper or take them upstairs? And I'm looking at her face to face, and I'm like, sure, honey, of course. So later that night, what do I do? I forget the socks. Now, that's kind of a funny example, but the reality is, 
listening without acting upon that feedback can cause a lot of problems between a marriage or a relationship. Would you agree? Like, say again. No, she did not. <laughs> That's, but my point is, the brands. My point is, the brands that are that are listening to the collective feedback of the community and making significant changes or innovations to their product are seeing that engagement increase. And those are the companies that are that are seeing revenue increases as well. So, everybody know what that little green thing is? Do they have those here in France? Okay, they're called um, splash stick. It's a splash stick. And what it does is when you buy a coffee back in anywhere, how many times have you spilled coffee on your on your shirt? I always do when I wear a white shirt for some reason. I always spill coffee like right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So that actually was part that was actually a customer recommendation. So with the site my Starbucks idea, which is here, it was somebody had suggested they create some plastic mechanism to stick in the coffee cup so that it doesn't spill. So what happened? <coughs> they changed the customer experience for millions of people. <coughs> millions of people of Americans who drink way too much coffee. And they've also, they, they're building a, a strong advocacy online by doing that. Crowdsourcing products. Um, I'm sure you guys like scones. Well, we like scones too in America. I like, I like the um, raspberry scones. And I was a little ticked off at the Starbucks in my neighborhood when they got rid of raspberry scones. So guess what I did? I logged into my Starbucks idea and I said, I want raspberry scones at the Starbucks on El Camino. Still haven't gotten it yet, but hey, who knows? Um, okay, so I want to play a video. Can we get a video, the video back here? So at Intel, I was the lead on, you've probably seen or, or know who Ajay Bhatt is. Um, or, or sponsors of tomorrow. It was a campaign which was really meant to, to humanize the Intel brand. So I want to I want to watch this video really quick and then talk to you about what transpired. So that was a campaign we launched, launched in May of 2009. And, um, actually, let me go back there. Okay. So, Ajay Bhatt is the founder of the USB, or one of the co-founders. He is also an Intel employee. And this whole campaign was positioned as a way to humanize the Intel brand. Because at the end of the day, we're a manufacturing company. Boring, right? So what we wanted to do is highlight certain people in the organization that have made impact. Ajay Bhatt being one of them. So this actually this was released on TV, um, and then we put it on YouTube. And within like two weeks, there was like over a million views. Um, we used Nielsen Buzz Metrics and Radian 6 to track conversations. And what we found was there was a huge community asking for those t-shirts. The community in Gizmodo asking uh, within the comments in Engadget, uh, Twitter, within the YouTube comments on various forums. There, I, I saw an Excel spreadsheet of almost 1,000 comments of people asking for t-shirts. So if you've ever worked in a, in, a, in a big brand like an Intel or HP or Dell or what have you, you know that trying to get t-shirts can take like a really long time, like months. <laughs> so we had to act fast. And I, I think I turned around these t-shirts in like two weeks. And by the way, that's not the real Ajay, that is an actor. And so we did get some flack for that, this whole, you know, being inauthentic. But the reality is he just didn't want to be on TV. Um, so we actually made, and we put it in a press release too. That's a cool PR. Um, okay, so we actually made authentic, so real Ajay bought t-shirts. So we had Ajay go to take a picture. And so, but that's him, that's the real Ajay bought. And so what we did was, we did a, a Twitter giveaway. And we said, 